Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back of his teardown. Today I have this, which is a professional soldering iron. Not a regular soldering iron, a professional one. And it's so professional it uses USB power and the tip can be easily replaced. So that's basically the marks of professional soldering iron. And you can see here by uh, Tech Beach Inc sent this in to me and he's putting it here. It's a complete load of London. Ah, oh. and uh, so clearly he's impressed. So I thought I would have a look. I'm pretty sure he sort of said he didn't get anything out of it, anything good anyway, worth reporting. So uh, I'm going to have a go. And there's, oh, he's included even a little bit of solder. We could go through the bump, but the bump is going to just say it's good. And look, plug it into your laptop and use it as a soldering iron. In fact, do this, do this, and probably blow out your USB port on your laptop. Yeah, be careful. Right, here it is. I don't know how much you paid for it. I don't even know where you got it. I suspect it might be a Maplin type job. Um, there seems to be a contact on here. No other uh, make, well, let's say make, no other sort of other contact there. So probably when you touch that, it might be like a transistor type input floating and then it'll just come on when it detects your finger. Headphone style power jack. And interestingly, they're using three cores on that. So I do have a USB power supply next to me and it's not a very juicy one, but I'm gonna plug my charge doctor into it. And uh, we're gonna have a little look. See, I know you can't see the screen, but just I'll, I'll help you out with that. I'll let you know. If you wanna have a look at what the screen will show you though, you can see it's got the voltage, the um, amper, amps, um, amperes. It's got the amperes, it's got the amps, it's got the milliamp hours across from time. So of course, you could reset that if you ever wanted to actually measure charge. You know, today if you were charging a mobile phone or something, you could see how many milliamp hours have gone into it. But we're not going to use that, of course, because we're really just interested in these two. Um, so I'm going to pop it over there, though, because uh, we need the room. We need the room for this bad boy. So we plug this into its rear end. How nice! It's got a red LED. Um, oh, let me just check. It's not drawing anything. <laughs> uh, Okay, so how do we get it to actually come on? It's certainly not coming on at the moment. There's zero amps being drawn, so I'm going to have a quick look. Just a quick, the quickest of looks. Heating up can be less than 15 seconds, cooling down less than 30, long life of blah, blah, blah. Slightly touching the metal point on the body of the soldering pen, then the LED will be lighted up and the job can be started. If leaving the item unused for 25 seconds, the LED light will be turned off and the pen will get into sleeping mode automatically. Woo, that's a bit of a mouthful. Um, I suspect it's just not doing anything. Uh, it really isn't doing anything. Although it says it's using zero amps, but the LED's on. I mean, the LED must be drawing something. Ah, <laughs> Don't touch the tip of solar iron, guys. Yeah, that's feeling pretty damn cold. And I'm, I'm, I'm very cognizant of the current meter while I'm doing this because I don't want it to all of a sudden decide, yes, I'm going to go on and uh, then start burning me up. Nothing. So it's uh, genuinely going to be a teardown, I think, today because we're going to try to figure out what's uh, up with this thing. And if it works, that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? A little, nice little gadget. Um, Tech Beach, I will send this back to you if it works uh, because... Your need is greater than mine. I have too many soldering irons, if anything, and actually I only really use the one, my stalwart, <coughs> one on my bench, which have been with me for many a year on the same tip, through many a plastic bag and other bits and things that I use it on that I shouldn't. Microelectronics, surface mount, everything. I use it for everything. So for me to sort of replace that now would be almost sacrilegious. I will have to suffer with it forever. Right, there's the three screws and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm never really too sure on zooms. Um, I kind of don't like using it half the time because it's hassle, but then I do like using it because I've got a rushes monitor to, next to my head and it's easier for me to see because it's a bit like a microscope. So what I might do is replace that Russia's monitor with an actual big monitor and uh, just clean this. Just trying to get these screws out. There we go. Um, and then that way I can give you a better quality zooming experience and uh, save my eyes at the same time. Okay, last screw out. It's a bit fiddly.
fiddly actually. Let's, let's, let's give you a feel of the plastic. It's actually pretty good. It does feel like a reasonably good plastic has been used. Take the collet off and I suspect it will come apart. Come apart. So come to me. So ah! This will be an easy fix. This will be an easy. This will be an easy fix because the wire is off. Because the wire, because the wire, because the wire is off. This will be an easy fix because the wire is off. There we go. Anyone name that tune? If you can name that tune, I'm going to give you a prize. A prize banana. But you got to come to my house to collect it. That's the only yeah. That's the only issue. Actually, to be honest, if there are people willing to come to my house to collect stuff, I've got lots of prizes. Um, most people would call that shite, uh, electronic tat that uh, I can't get rid of. But no, it's prizes. They're definitely prizes, not rubbish. Now, while I'm waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, I'm just going to quickly flip that board over very quickly and gingerly. And let's just zoom in again, because I'm using this as a microscope, my bad eyes. Here we have an MX3N06, a 3N06, it's a surface mount type power regulator I believe, but not being mounted on the surface obviously. Um, crystal, what's the crystal for? The crystal is because there is an NE, oh it's an NE555 timer, woohoo! What the heck is that doing? That's so weird. So the um, spring contact that you touch is going to pin one, no, pin two. Hang on, I don't know quite the pin. This is pin one, the one next to it, of the NE555, and that's all doing something. So it's a bit old school, old tech, but it's obviously something to do with the whole keeping your finger down and acting as a timer. Just gonna heat that up now. Let's find some tweezers. Ugh. Get that in shot. So you can see we're pretty much there. I'm not tinning both ends, but maybe I should. Definitely I should, because I think that's why it uh, came off in the first place. Yeah, that's well tinned. Now that's going nowhere. Woohoo! He's in. I'm going to turn my soldering iron off. That is always a sign, a sign of confidence. And uh, try to slip this PCB back in. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I'm humming, tuneless, tunelessly pom poming the theme tune for the Archers radio show. Uh, if you're not um, in the UK, uh, the Archers is probably the most hip radio show you can listen to right now it's all the kids they love it um, so yeah get on uh, that international internet radio and start listening to the archers and uh, let me know how you get on with that if you enjoy enjoy its uh, upbeat uplifting attitude get these screws in it's quite a nice um, iron actually because it's so slim it's I do, I do quite like this. I kind of hope it works because if you did have an iron like this that actually did work on your USB, I think that uh, you definitely get some mileage out of it. If, if uh, I th I'm trying to think how that button thing works. So I think it basically means you press the button and that will set off the 555 timer and it will kind of just maybe wangle away for a while. You know, for like it will give you like. 10 seconds after you've hit it, it'll stay on for, and then it'll knock itself off. I, th I think that's all that it's doing. And we'll be able to confirm that now, more or less with this. So we'll plug in our charge doctor again. 5.1 volts, zero amps. Plug that in, yeah. It's dropped down to 4.1 volts at 1.14 amps, so uh, it's definitely, definitely putting something out to that. Let's have a look-see. Try and make melt some solder. Zoom in again. Again, in and out, all these zooms. It's like one of those Transformer movies. I don't have, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, look. Yeah, that's doing it. That's friggin' good. Let's see if I've got uh, a PCB lying around. I usually do have a PCB sitting on this shelf. Sitting on my dark shelf. 
do do do. All right, here's something. Here's something I made earlier. Clearly uh, a logic board for uh, it's an old revision one booby board with a relay glued on and PC Molex connectors and uh, maybe some pull ups here. So that's uh, obviously something that you might want to rework. So let's try a, a non surface mount. We'll try a through hole component first. So we've got these two resistors here hooked up to this pin and uh, let's pretend I wanted to sort of desolder them so I would uh, apply a little bit a little bit of solder there just to act as a lubricant a heat thermal lubricant as you will and uh, yeah that came off nicely let's pop them back on one's on the other one's on <laughs> absolutely brilliant yeah that's good um, I think I may have even slagged off one of these online again like yeah 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 bullshit but you know it's a really lightweight iron um, I'll zoom out and show you again, um, but yeah, it's it's really lightweight. The fact that you've got everything self-contained in the iron is, is, as well is good. Obviously, you're not going to get uh, temperature sort of control on this. So I've got this diode. This is a surface mount diode right now. Yeah, look, there it goes. Sorry if you if, uh, weren't quite in the center of the, the frame there, but I'll put it back on. So this surface mount diode. Let's put that back on. Put that in back on. 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 Obviously, remember it's surface mount. You're going to have to keep going back and forth if you want it to sit flat. Um, I'm going to try again from this angle, oh, so I can get my finger on it. Basically, yeah, it's all right. I mean, I wouldn't um, recommend putting a surface mount diode on with a normal iron unless you've cleaned it all up first, and that's why it's on a bit wonky. But it's fine. That would still work. That'd be a good repair. Done. Uh, just to show you the iron, I mean, it's it's super light. It's drawing about 1.1 amps. Comes with this neat little thing. Yeah, I mean, it, let's just say, for example, this is in your office desk because you're doing a little bit of mobile repone, mobile repone fair, um, mobile phone repair on your desk. Um, yeah, that's good. It's got another bit of wire here with a, another circuit on it. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I mean, this it definitely because you saw how it attacked that big old diode. So, if you can imagine something like these little surface mount resistors, it's almost definitely going to work. But I don't really fancy taking them off purely because I don't want to put it back on. But yeah, you could if you're ever going to do that, by the way, just get a blob of solder. Assuming you're going to just replace it with a different surface mount resistor, just put a blob of solder across both legs and hold the iron across both pins, and it'll just it'll just lift off, it'll whisk it off whisk it off like whipping up a meringue not a problem yeah that's pretty good now uh, I could let's see I can still see it drawing current and it did say something about knocking itself off after a bit <laughs> by the way I'm just gonna watch the current as I blow it so you can see there that's the current there <sighs> Yeah, it's not really fighting me. It's pretty consistent. Um, he says trying not to burn his lips, and I have burnt my lips doing that before, um, being a bit careless. I'm not seeing it knock off, so I'd be a bit wary of that. I don't know how good the circuit is for knocking it off. On the back though, it says Z ZD20U, five volts, eight watts. So that's an eight watts USB soldering iron, and yeah, indeed it does work. Check the power output on your USB power supply on your PC there if you're going to use it on your PC. 1.1 amps is, you know, it's a little bit hot for a lot of um, cheapo mobile phone chargers and things. But if you get a good mobile phone charger, which would be two or three amps, um, no problem. So you could use this in your car. It definitely make a really good mobile portable iron. And look, you just whip that off, and that's it. I mean, I'm going to try to put the lid on. I don't think the lid's going to melt because it's going to be made of one of those plastics. Don't. The lid itself looks like it's supposed to be a kind of a mini stand too. In fact, it is. Yeah, the, the lid acts as a stand, so definitely not going to melt. Um, super neat package. Um, I would say, uh, yeah, that's well worth worth having. It comes with this really thick solder, though. Um, don't use that. Just use something thin. And I'm going to give uh, Tech Beach a little favour and give him a few wraps. There you go. He's got a few wraps to play with. That's going to help him out. So um, I might. Um, Mr. Tech Beach sent me a bunch of components, you'll uh, or kits basically, which you saw this probably in an earlier video. 
Um, I might just use that iron on some of these just to give it a go to, to see if it does work until I sort of get bored of it and then just want to use my normal one. But yeah, good. I think that's a good kit. Um, I don't know where it's from, but I'll have a quick look on Amazon and see if there is one on Amazon. I'll put the links down below. But yeah, I think that's actually pretty damn good iron. Uh, I uh, have to eat my eat my hat. It's uh, It's definitely... I would have never considered buying something like that myself, but it does the trick. Whether or not it'll work so well on the sort of thicker, you know, thicker gauge wires and stuff, if you're doing automotive and things, I can't tell you. Um, I can tell you it probably will struggle because it's not going to have much thermal capacity. So as soon as you touch it on something, it's going to cool down. But actually, small electronic work, LED house repairs, um, household repairs, I would say, yeah, that's pretty damn good. So where it says a load of shite, I need to find a pen. And there it is and say no it's uh, it's it's good actually it's good and uh, I did forget on previous some previous videos to do this but let's put the tick we restored an electronic thing that's absolutely superb so there you go hope that's been of some use to you please like subscribe and share if you're that way inclined and as ever drum roll thanks for watching see you guys